Oh, it's on. It's on. It's on totally differently today, folks. Is it on? Don't. Don't. Don't question. Because it's happening. Oh, it's on. Oh, it's going. We're going. It, it's going. It's it's building. It's a whole new experience for show 50. We have changed it up just a little bit for you. So <laughs> sit back and listen. <laughs> listen to the smooth sounds of Harris Heller. <laughs> and uh, our new favorite Harris Heller song. This is off Insomnia. Free flow. Ooh, ooh, what's that I hear? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's Monday. The 14th. We're going to let this one play out. You know why? There's no more 10 seconds. There's no more 5 seconds. You still with us, Corey? Oh, yeah. Oh, he's here. I'm here. And guess what? Roscoe Farias. We're, we're in the studio. And we got so much to talk about. We know we're a little late today, but you know in, what? In the present? In the present. It's all right. It's all good. Live. I guess we're always live. Yeah, well, except if you're watching us recorded, then we're recorded live. Oh. Ha! <laughs> still <was> live. <laughs> recorded in front of a live... Dog. <laughs> what? Live studio dog. It, it pauses Doge? here for a minute. It pauses, and then guess what? It comes back strong. The doze drops again. You know what I'd really like? To, I'd really love YouTube to figure out one <laughs> thing about the, the the stream setup between OBS and everything else. Why it spikes at certain times during a, a stream? I don't know. Even though we've got it capped properly in OBS, I'm watching it now and it's in like 4,500 bits, and I'm like, told you not to do that, but it doesn't listen. Doesn't. Nope. Oh, and it's back. I love this song. <laughs> yes. We're just going to let this play out because the song is so good. But hi, welcome, Yo. YouTube. Thanks for coming back. Nice to see you guys here. How's everybody's day going? They can't answer. Mike, how's your day going? Much better, thank you. Excellent. Excellent. And we're coming in, baby. There it is. Dak, I told you there was no... We're here. We're live. There was no 10... <laughs> No five four three two one. None of that garbage today. It's show fifty. Well, hey, I, how am I supposed to know where we're going then? I, well, we're going. We're going. We're actually live now. I, I know we're I, live. But that's look. We're live. We're live. I get live. It. I understand. Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, it is again. It is uh, June fourteenth, twenty twenty one. I'm here with Corey Young in the L studio. Whoa, watch this way. Oh, the doge, the dog. oh, he's actually here. See and, the doge. And goes see the doge. And the dog. And everybody else is here. He's here. We're here. Um, we got so much to talk to you guys about, but again, it's show 50. And I guess the first thing we have to respond to is thank you for all the con comments we've gotten recently on the videos. Uh, really, really enamored by them. Uh, some people left some glowing stuff out there, which is yeah. nice. Uh, subscribers keep increasing. We, we are absolutely enamored with the respect that you guys have graced upon us at as a growing fledgling channel and what we're willing to cover here yeah, yeah. uh we're still working on some special stuff can't tell you about it yet but as soon as we can we will so uh hold on to that Corey. how are how are you i'm doing well i'm doing well <laughs> for anybody who's watching the show lately you know i kind of had a cold a little bit it's just cold but uh but i'm, I'm getting over <laughs> you have to so... say that these days i know honestly i have to say it but anyway yeah just the cold just the cold. but uh, maybe a little bit of allergies maybe but anyway i'm pretty much over it so yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah. How about you, man? I don't good. I don't mean to be flippant, but it's like I do. Anyhow, so here's the deal. We got uh, Bezos in space. We got Leno goes plaid, Musk mock <laughs> masked morons, uh, aka anonymous, and we don't want any yes, flack. Please, for this. anonymous, don't don't hang don't us. don't we're come just, after us. We're just chatting. Yeah, and uh, is the Apple Car back? That's uh, that's a couple of questions that we have for today's episode, and it is a little bit more high energy because it's great to have Corey back in the studio. So, um, what? what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm feeling it. Yeah. It's it's an energetic yeah, moment. Good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we do have a lot to talk about, though, because I think last week we kind of glossed over some of the things that we were looking at and we totally forgot something. So that was definitely the Jeff Bezos and what's going oh, yes. on with them, because yes. that's usually something in our wheelhouse. But we kind of just skipped over it yep. uh, as you guys filter into the room. I think we didn't really discuss order, but I guess which way do you want to do um... this today? I don't know. We could do car stuff first, first. at the beginning okay. and then uh, run into the, uh, the billionaires 
Yeah, okay. Then you know what? Then I'm going to take the old uh, helm here to use a uh, that whatever. Hey, guess what, folks? It, it may actually be that the uh, the Apple car is back on as they've hired uh, someone from BMW. This is they've hired, and this is according to who is this according to? This Auto is Week. Auto Week. They said that Ulrich Kranz. I hope I said that right. Probably uh, an old BMW VP who had been there for 30 years, part of the EV startup Canu, I guess that is, is uh, suddenly been uh, hired to work over at Apple. Yeah. And look, there's nothing about the car here. It's just saying that this is a, a move that they've made in recent weeks. It is what it is, but it, it actually throws just some some fire back into the fact that, according to the article, it says here that Apple's EV development program is called Project Titan, and it's been reported that Apple is about to sign a joint venture agreement with EV powertrain maker LG Electronics, and LG Electronics would build Project Titan prototypes to measure consumer interest. Interestingly enough, because I, 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 a, I didn't know that LG would have been a big enough player in the automotive industry enough mm -hmm. to build a prototype. B, if you're going to go into the electric car area, to me at least, it, it seems kind of weird because BMW is not the one that strikes me as the leader in EV technology, at least not right now. So that's a an odd pairing. But hey, man, what's uh, what's your take on this one? Because it's kind of interesting to see that the Apple car could be back. Yeah, I mean, it's it's this is something in the article even talks about it. But I mean, the Apple car has been off and on for a while now. Ever? I mean, some people it's called Project Titan. Then it's just kind of the Apple uh, Apple car project. I mean, we don't really know what it is. I mean, one thing we can say and I'll say this knowing that, uh, you know, Mike's a big Apple guy. Um, I have I some Androids, but I use obviously some Apple products, too. Um, Apple designs well right yeah um and they have a fairly good um interface customer like experience like how you interface with the product so i'm really interested to see it, what the the design side of the apple car would be because i know the technology is going to be something that they're probably going to innovate on that's what they usually do with their products right um and so i'm kind of interested to see if they can really honestly compete with the bigger players that are already in the market or even are coming to the market uh, quite soon. Uh -huh. I mean, we know some of, we obviously know Tesla, kind of the, the new kind of shaking up the industry. It's been doing that for a while, of course, nothing new there. But we know uh, we've been talking a lot about like Ford bringing in their electric pickups. So there's some companies that are big players in the auto industry that are now electrifying, right? We've been talking about that for a while too, mm -hmm. BMW and everybody else. So, so yeah, now it's interesting to try to see what Apple will have up its sleeve. It's been Let's at it see. for a while. It's so sleeve. I'm interested. Yeah, I'm you interested. you say sleeve because what Apple always has up their sleeve is creating the need where you didn't think there was a need, and also vertical integration, right? So Apple famously reduced their uh, their their audio jacks. They took the the random jack out of the back of a phone. They were the first to do it. They created the need for ear pods, and suddenly That's created their own market. Yeah, they, yeah, they're, they, they're yeah. innovated, and they tie in their products. Look, I I supported a Windows environment for almost a decade at a Fortune 500 company at a level that was considered expert level support okay and while i in uh, while i enjoy windows computers for certain things the integration and in putting on this show even though obs has poor interface with apple products at some level between us working on apple products all together we can share stuff seamlessly in in this environment like flawlessly so it has a payoff and i'm wondering if they're going to use that that vertical integration of apple products where like carplay if you've ever had it in your car is fairly decent i mean it's a good interface yeah. uh, i found myself recently in two rental cars it, it had carplay and a ford product that didn't and i'll tell you the carplay made it a better experience so i'm wondering if you know how they're going to stack their vertical integration of their products yeah. okay. but the other thing that i'm curious about is still no microsoft car still no google car still no yeah. android car nobody yeah. else from that side of the the playing field has ever kind of gone well, this I mean, direction i mean waymo's got their Waymo slash Google, they're doing their self-driving car, but that's still kept under wraps too as well. Still kept under wraps. And what I wanted to say also, maybe just a, a touch on for me for the last part of this would be not so much the product of the Apple car itself, but the but being Apple at the size it's going to be and the scale they're going to want to bring this out, whatever sure. that is, is going to put Big. further stress on infrastructure everywhere, right? And I'm not talking particularly the Apple car product. I'm talking just electric car the grid charging raw materials Ooh. you know so i'm I, i'm there's more to it than just the car itself like we've been saying with air taxis that market too right it's it's this multifaceted they all integrate with each other mm -hmm. so 
I'm also interested to see what they have up their, up their sleeve you about that too. So. Yeah, you said scale. Apple chain. Now look, where Apple also creates this 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 <laughs> need that you didn't think you needed when you need a four hundred dollar pair of you know earphones that do spatial audio, or when you need a two hundred fifty dollar pair of earbuds that you may not necessarily thought were the best, but actually produce spatial audio sound that's phenomenal. Which I just played mine with the new spatial audio in Apple Music, and it's phenomenal. But when you say scale, I think Apple has the propensity to always go upscale. And, and you know, maybe they want to go like a Mercedes EQS kind of like upscale electric inroad kind of thing for them because that almost plays a little bit to their market. However, I know rumors have always said in the past that they wanted to have an open scale or a large scale release of an automobile. So I don't know what economy of scale it plays into for them in that yeah. environment, but yeah. it's interesting to see that there's more news on the front and you can find yourself uh, reading the article that we have here yeah. in the link below. It's let us know what you think. Yeah. I mean, it's I'll just read. interesting yeah. to see if the Apple car is going to be back on after it's been on again, off again, on again, off again, just ridiculous. Yeah, I guess, I guess the whole takeaway there, right. Is they got, they got some uh, intellectual um, input from somebody that ran Beamer mm -hmm. for I three, I eight series. So yeah, so. Hopefully it'll help them with whatever they're working on. Basically, I don't, I don't know. So, and and it's worth noting also in the article, Project Titan boss currently is uh, Doug Field, who previously oversaw the Tesla three model development and production. Which, it, you know, Apple has a tendency to go out and get the people that you think yes. would be necessary for that market and for that integration. So we'll look forward to see if Apple actually finally gets. We'll see what happens. The Apple car. Then uh, for you guys at home, remember, like, subscribe, follow. We enjoy all the support. And hey, let us know again in the comments below if we got it right, if we got it wrong, if you liked what we said or if we didn't, because uh, we want to hear from you guys. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. And with that said, it is time to go to... Okay, what's the next one we're going to? We're going, we're going for... to really fast. Oh, <laughs> I see you get to do you this, play one. this one. Huh? You're going to play the... No, because... Okay, we were... I would love to. The problem is I don't think we can because it's copyright material but from CNBC. All right, cool. No worries. So we can't. I mean, there's quotes I can. I yeah, can you read can read the quotes, read but I would love to play the full video, but it's yeah. actually got Shepard Smith from CNBC and yeah. some other stuff in there. But cool. uh, no I'll no let worries. you go ahead and, and take there the we floor. Go. Yeah. Here you go. So this next one is um, basically from Entertainment Canada, but, you know, Entertainment TV. So and this is basically saying uh, Jay Leno. So if you didn't already uh, or were not already aware, uh, Elon has released, uh, unveiled the new Tesla Model 3 called the Plaid Edition. He announced the quickest and, and uh, fastest Tesla S that they've got. And uh, Jay Leno's already taken it out and, and actually beat the land speed record for a production automobile. Yeah. Uh, he was in full race gear in, uh, at a drag strip. And uh, I'll just kind of, again, we're not going to show the video because of copyright stuff, but I'll kind of read it to you. So Jay Leno was over here and getting interviewed on the, uh, t the Tonight um, CNBC. And basically he was saying he take it. He said, uh, and this is a quote, I'll tell you what I did. I went up to Famoso Drag Straight and Bakersfield. Uh, and in the Tesla Plaid, I drove by and the NRH, NHRA guy that was there to make it official. And uh, it turned in 9.247 seconds at 152 miles per hour. So a 9.2 quarter mile in the Tesla Model S Plaid at 152. Uh, and then he goes on, Jay Leno goes on to say, it's now the fastest production car you could buy, faster than Ferrari, faster than three and a half million dollar Bugattis, uh, and, uh, end quotes. And of course we know the car is supposed to release for 135,000. Again, not cheap. We're, we're totally not saying that the new Model S is cheap. No. But, uh, but to say that the new Model S Plaid Edition can do a 9.2 quarter mile is, um, that's quick. That's, that is quick. That's, uh, crazy fast. That is uh, for your go to the go to the fast. store, pick up some milk, and then uh, blow a nine point two second on the way home. So, um, well, I, yeah. You know what's uh, interesting though? Quick. Um, yeah. Quick. Didn't didn't they also just cancel another version of the Model Three, which was which which one was the one that they canceled? They just canceled a Model S. Um, the Model uh, something. Hold on, beyond me... that it, yeah give me a second here. because here's the thing from from all estimations this 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 car new version battery tech yeah the plaid plus the plaid plus which i think um, they said was gonna have the new version batteries and be even faster but when you get yes, zero to yeah. 60 i think and this thing's going zero to 60 in 1.9 that's, okay. He didn't claim. He didn't say anything about his zero to sixty times. I read some um, other places. I know it's supposed to do zero to sixty in one point nine nine, and I know I was not. I was in the process of reading exactly the fine details because supposedly they were measuring their <laughs> zero to sixty a little bit different than everybody else. Okay. Meaning that, like the initial roll distance, they weren't counting. Uh, okay. So, I I'm not. 
I, I'm not uh, I'm not totally up on that exactly, but it's it's near hmm. two seconds. But if you're if the you're... idea was that it would be the first under two seconds. OK. And it it might be I, I am not I'm, I have to look it up. still. OK, so Plaid Plus is just ridiculous. I don't even know if there's a need for Plaid Plus at this point. But if you can go zero to 16, 1.9, fine. If you watch things like Car Wow, which is a, a gentleman from uh, over in the <laughs> UK who turns around and does zero to 60 and quarter mile comparisons with all these other cars and you see what this car could possibly do yeah. being the fastest production car. First of all, just thinking about hitting an accelerator and going in a quarter mile and nine, what was it? Nine point what? 9.2. 9.2. If you're a kid of the eighties, the nineties, and you used to remember what kind of Camaro or Mustang GT it took to do a nine second quarter mile and how much money and ladder bars. That's and a built car. That is a built car. Back, that you know, is back in the day. Usually yeah. turbocharged or supercharged at that point. Okay. Stroked. I mean, that thing is putting <clears throat> out horsepower and then you had to worry about getting it to the ground. You're yeah. talking about going and spending $125,000 hitting a drag strip, possibly just changing your tires and, and going for the ride of your life with little or no experience. Yeah. Um, does, does Tesla need to do more to prove that there's going to be excite? Look, I love naturally horse aspirated cars there. There's nothing like horsepower noise in some cases, but man, if at 9.247, if you want to have a fast sedan, this is the one to get might not go as fast around racetrack, but, Quarter mile seems to be doing very well. Yeah, I mean, just to give you a little background too. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be a tri motor, it's supposed to have three motors, mm -hmm. uh, the three motor version. They're claiming it has, and this is straight from their website, it's saying uh, 1,020 horsepower uh, with an EP range, Jesus. EPA rated range of 390. So we know we know you guys that uh, rate um, range in across the across the Atlantic. It might be a little bit different, but again, that's how it's done by the EPA over here. It's 390 miles, mm -hmm. uh, claiming a, a top speed of 200. And uh, with proper wheels and tires. So again, I don't know what Jay had on this car. I didn't pick that that up from the from the video either. But um, I've read some other things. It's got induction car charging built into the car. There's mm -hmm. some new screens in the car. The inside of the car is a little bit different than your regular Model S as well. And it's got the it's the, got the yoke. The, the I was yoke. just gonna say that. Right, so the yoke. We we looked at it when it was announced. Different. Yeah. So it's not exactly not straight a Model S with some different uh, like go stuff mm -hmm. if you know it's 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 got, it's a little bit a little bit different than your regular model s but anyway there you go it's yeah, it's crazy this makes me more excited for cybertruck honestly yeah you cyber know because this tri motor this is a tri motor s so you put tri motor this all this tech in a in a truck it's gonna weigh more we, we know it'll weigh a bit more okay uh it's still gonna be freaking quick okay um, so here's my prediction cybertruck does quarter mile in 10 point nine seconds because the cyber truck is quoted to going zero and this is the tri-motor version they're zero to 60 i'm looking at the website right now they're yeah, zero to 60 idea. is saying 2.9 which puts it one second off let's give it a second and a half, so it's 10 and a half. so let's go let's go 10 and a, let's go 11.3 is a quarter could you imagine 11 second truck <laughs> 11 second truck that is crazy okay um it just gets look, and I know we we get onto the Teslas all the time, and the difference is because this is what he does, and he's a showman. Okay, he, he is, is yeah. he is a PT Barnum type guy, Tesla at this point. It's not Tesla, uh, Elon Musk, <clears throat> and he knows that this kind of stuff, it, you know, it, it it's virtually like the Halo car situation all over again. When when Dodge made the Viper a few years back, when they started doing that, and they said, "Hey, this is the ambition of a Halo car." And that was the modern reintroduction of a Halo car. And look who followed suit. Ford followed suit with the, you know, with, with their return of their Halo cars. Corvette went upscale. It's just amazing to see that this is the type of thing that that they're doing for the for the EV industry. So pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap that one up. Yep. And move um, on. So please like, share, subscribe if you can if you haven't already. Very much appreciated. Helps us out. And uh, we'll be looking to bring you more cool stuff, a uh, variety of topics, uh, of course. And we usually go, but we'll go back to our other stuff, too. But mm -hmm. yeah, launches. Yeah. You, yeah yes. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, I guess I'm going to go with Mr. Musk again oh, on yeah. this one. Okay, yeah. And I'm going to press preface this with please don't eat us. Um, yeah, hack us. Please yeah. Hack us. <laughs> or, or hack us. Or whatever. Elon Musk had, uh, had a little bit of a response last week. If you remember, Elon Musk famously started this whole cryptocurrency conversation, basically saying that Dogecoin had an opportunity to become a major cryptocurrency. At the same time, about two months ago, said that Bitcoin would be acceptable for Tesla model cars. 
Then he backtracked, seemingly after he had a Saturday Night Live appearance, saying that no longer would Tesla accept Bitcoin for uh, for their uh, their Tesla cars. Yeah. And they said that because basically they weren't sure that the carbon footprint of Bitcoin was able to be, I guess, green friendly. Uh, they thought that maybe the carbon emissions from doing all the mining proved out that it was probably a not good decision to accept Bitcoin. However, uh, out of nowhere, it seems like Anonymous basically turned around and called out Elon Musk for saying, hey, guys, you are the ones that, are, well, you are the one that's basically trying to manipulate the cryptocurrency marketplace. Yeah, yeah. And by doing so, uh, you're hurting all of us. Well, destroying lives, literally destroying lives. That's what they said. Yeah. Mm. Well, Elon kind of said, hey, he, he had a little response to this one. And he said uh, he tweeted out. He said, not even a good fake anonymous. Uh, the article is behind a paywall and it looks like anonymous hacking skills are not enough to get behind it. And hackers in movies be like, I'm in. So he's alluding to the fact that some people basically said that uh, this really wasn't a video from anonymous that basically Someone else made this video to appear as if it was done by Anonymous, but it didn't have their standard stake in just basically putting things out there in the free open. They actually put it behind a paywall, which lends a lot of credence to the fact that he might be right. However, I mean, maybe he might accept Bitcoin for cars again. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so you take you take that I one. Mean, yeah, as Mike just said, they he had said they'd accept Bitcoin, and then he said they would no longer accept Bitcoin because of the impact it's doing on the environment, as far as how you mine cryptocurrency, how you mine the Bitcoin. Um, and we can, I know we actually uh, just briefly while I just said that I was thinking of a, a comment we had on one of the videos that actually mentioned maybe we could talk about cryptocurrency, like talk about how it works. Mm -hmm. We can maybe we can maybe go into that and maybe like. Sure. Actually do a thing because I know that was something somebody mentioned. So we might we we'll probably go into that. We'll talk about like how cryptocurrency actually functions. But the long and the short of it is just for just for this chat right here is you need a computer that runs a program that that um, in a way discovers more Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and by doing so, it uses a lot of electricity. Not only just in the machine to actually like run the program to to crunch the numbers, but also in cooling. Uh, because a lot of times when miners do this, they have whole bunch of computers right and they're using up a lot of electricity to just run it but also cool and everything else so um anyway they said they would no longer set bitcoin uh until they until what did he say exactly until they until could they prove, could prove i believe that, that they, they could prove they that were, they were 50 they were 50 clean energy or something yes. like that yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and then now he's saying they uh whenever that's done they'll accept it again so i mean i don't know it's he's he is a bit all over the place um and whether he believes it or not, people do pay attention to those tweets. Mm -hmm. uh, For sure. Um, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Why well, no? Add more. Add more. I, I mean, you, no, I mean, that means you if, were going to go if somewhere. If you follow around with this, you know the SEC's been on him. Yeah. A bunch already. Right. For his tweets, and so it's a uh, it, it's a crazy world that you know that literally, um, Twitter. Uh, I say this knowing, you know, Twitter could be a place where you could influence global uh, prices on everything, mm -hmm. and it's totally true. It is so. Uh, I mean, it's it's just the newest form of you know, like newspaper, right? If some CEO back in the '30s said, uh, you know, we're not going to do business with whoever, right? It would have a huge impact. So it's well. Let's just take a look. Uh, at... He must know, of course. I mean, you know. of course. I mean, anyone, any, anyone that turns around and plays Twitter like a like a fiddle, has, turns out and they could make massive results in lots of different marketplaces. Yeah. And if you look at the overall, if you look at a year of Bitcoin, uh, you know, it seems like the shakeup in the Bitcoin market, the only thing it did was basically bring it down to values that we saw back in January. But that's still nothing compared to where it was. I mean, if you look at last July, it was at 9,000. Mm -hmm. It's still... Yeah, it's near 40. Uh, it's still... Today, yeah, wasn't it? it's near 40 today. Yeah. I mean, you're... you're Look, if you're going to turn around and tell him that it was all his doing, that he made one shake in the cryptocurrency marketplace because of a bunch of tweets, but the fact that, oh, he played on, on other people's fears and hopes about the actual currency, uh, come on. You know, some of that's also just market driven on the fact that this currency got hyperinflated since January and it might have been due for a correction, right? Could have been. Yeah, yeah. Market, The market would say so. However, uh, you know, let us know what you think, because cryptocurrency is hot and we know we, we went to non-transferable fund. So non 
fungible tokens. tokens. And there's N- been some cr- NFTs. NFTs. And there's been crazy yeah, prices the, the for stuff. The original Doge. Yeah. Uh, Doge meme. The the dog. The Doge meme. The original Doge meme just sold. What was it? I said it four was, million. I thought it was four million. Yeah, somebody just yeah. The person. It's a it's an it's a it seems like a nice lady from Japan who rescued this dog mm-hmm. and was just taking pictures of her dog and posted it on the internet and then it just went crazy and now she just sold it for four million. Four million. I mean, wow. Uh, here, take pictures of Roscoe. Put it on the internet. He's he's he's, he's part he's super cute. He's super, he is. Make bonies. Anyhow, folks, do us a favor, like, subscribe, follow, let us know in the comments below what you think about cryptocurrencies, what you think the future is, and whether or not you think that Elon Musk might, might, and I say might, be over-influencing the market in cryptocurrency, because it would be interesting to hear from what you guys... And do you guys have crypto? And which ones do you have? And what's the hottest one that I should invest in? That's what I really want to know. That's a lot more than I (laughs) asked. Anyhow, fine. Hey, uh, yeah, do that. All that. <laughs> All that. And and remember when you're when you're there, like, subscribe, and follow. Oh, That'd yeah, be that awesome too. Yes, too. Please. That'd be great. That would be help us out too. Uh, so anyhow, so Corey is gonna close out the day with uh, a, a man in space. Another billionaire. Yeah, another one. Okay, here we go. Uh, this one is uh, back from our our website, The Verge. It comes from basically saying Blue Origin. If you guys didn't know, Blue Origin is gonna be launching. Um, it's got four seats on board. Jeff Bezos is going to be on board with his brother. Jeff. They're going to go up to space in the new Shepard rocket, uh, past the Carmen line, so actually into space, and they auctioned off one of the seats. And this has been uh, kind of coming up on the radar for a while. There's been some auctions going on online, but this this last one was was kind of a live um, auction, and it ended up going for $28 million. Uh, And as far as I could tell, I haven't seen the identity. I don't think they said they'd release it just yet, but... Um, it took place in Boston, Mass, and uh, it was it was semi live, and yeah, twenty eight million, bam, winning bid. Uh, basically, it says the starting price was four point eight, and it went uh, to twenty eight in ten minutes. Huh. Uh, the good part about this, obviously, is of course somebody's going to space, which is super cool. Um, as always, <laughs> someone is going to space with weather, and I mean, you know, with Jeff, <laughs> sure, and his brother, but you're going to space. That's the cool. I'd like to go to space. Well, I mean, no, but I mean, yeah, with Jeff. But yeah, we're going to space. Awesome. Super I don't know cool. if I want to go with um, Jeff. The other part to know, the money's not just going to Jeff's pocket. Uh, he's actually um, going to donate it to his, uh, I mean, it's kind of self-serving, but they have a, a non-profit charity a club for the future. Right. It's Blue Origin, a Blue Origin charity, and all that money's going to that. So that's that's good. That's cool. Yeah, you know what this screams to me? Uh, PR? Uh, you have no customers. I hate to say that, but look, Blue Origin... Yeah. And well, we know we've been talking about that. We have, but yeah. it's difficult. It's difficult to see this happen for Blue Origin because we we have on the show covered it extensively that extensively that they didn't get the primary bids that they were putting themselves in for at some points in this whole venture of trying to get a competitive foothold in the space co- competition, right? Uh, obviously, Elon Musk, SpaceX, they have dominated over the last year, and they continued to do so even even. Taking the next step as being the next lander for the next lunar module yeah, me- well, missions. That one, yeah. Okay, that's pretty big. Starships obviously been been proving that it, it can successfully do certain things that other ships can't. And for the size and the durability to see if that market actually holds together, amazing. However, with Blue Origin, look, I guess it this is something that's different because you can't reinvent the propulsion system so much in space. You can't reinvent the delivery vehicle. You can't reinvent the way you get to space. It all has to happen in a very certain fashion. You need the velocity, reusable aircraft. And it just seems to me that SpaceX got there first and they keep improving in a way that is so successful that it's very hard to touch right now. And while I appreciate the fact that Jeff is stepping down from Amazon, like we've said before, wanting to head up Blue Origin Ooh. and save the business, um, you mentioned the other day that that there's one other guy that's going to be up in space even two weeks before him. Oh yes, yeah. So uh, that's the other part. Yeah, we didn't. I don't know. I don't think we said that on stream. Yeah, we didn't. I was we just didn't say it. But across, I was, as I was reading stuff, I saw that actually um, Richard Branson of Virgin Galactic or Virgin Atlantic, you know, yeah. the Virgin um, businesses. He's uh, last I checked, he was slated to be going up in his aircraft or his spacecraft to space two weeks prior to Jeff's supposed launch. So, and we know Elon has not said he's going up at all. So, um, it appears that Richard Branson just swooped in without even really being in the in the spotlight and said, "Actually, I'm going first. Oh, so you know, dude, uh, just, I just, just kidding. So, there's that. 
<laughs> Hold on a second. These are these are two that I just got to bring up because I just did a search for Richard Branson Virgin. What was this? Today, this is today, just today? yesterday. Oh, okay. Richard Branson Branson's Virgin Orbit in talks with former Goldman partner, Partners SPAC for three billion deal to go public, which is massive for them. Mm -hmm. And then the secondary one. This is just totally off the cuff. Um, and then the other one is that there already is one from the Guardian out over there that's basically saying that these two are rushing for space supremacy Ooh. between uh, Bezos and Mas Musk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they actually left out. No, no. Now they also brought in Richard Branson's Virgin yeah. Galactic Empire. So wow, uh, those two I didn't really think that were that were out there really as a conversation piece. Yeah. Who knows? I mean. Yeah. Look, again, you want Blue Origins to survive in the marketplace. You want yeah. the competition. Yeah, competition. You definitely do. Yeah, we know they've put a lot of infrastructure and buildings and a whole bunch of stuff over on the Space Coast, not too far away. And, you know, we, we like seeing activity over there and obviously having another company over there that's going to do some activity. I mean, we'd love to see more launches from everybody. Sure. But, you know, there's only so much uh, money and contracts, big contracts to go around. I mean, yeah, it's it's tough. These guys have tons tons of money. You know, the, arguably, uh, I mean, there's a, there's tons of other rich people around, but these guys are super loaded, and it's it's tough. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's a tough. Super, uh, it's tough. Super loaded. It's, tough. it's like uh, super base, but super loaded. Super base. See, when I think super loaded, I just think when you have too many beers. Super so, loaded. Get it? I get it, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> Ah, okay anyhow it's all, good. it's all good i think that's all we have time for today okay hey all right look like subscribe follow we got so much more to cover uh we're, we're planning out the shows for this week I, are we going to try to do a launch on thursday uh we got to see there's yeah, we're, we're to trying to work that. one in yeah. we're trying to what we're trying to do at this point is to actually incorporate the live show possibly mm -hmm. to cap it off with a launch at the end which is something that we might be able to do we're, we're working on it so uh yeah. again we still have some scheduling issues or stuff going on in the background that we have lives and we got to take care of that too. So uh, with that said, it's been good to be back in the studio. Yes. Uh, yes. We might have another studio show this week, which would be nice. Yep, yeah, might be Wednesday. Yeah. And it might be Wednesday. And uh, we're going to look forward to bringing you guys the top content that we want. And if there's something that you guys want us to talk about, let us know in the comments below because we want to hear from you if there's something else that you want us to touch on. Well, I know, uh, I know, like I said, it might hit that crypto thing. I do that. Yeah, yeah, because somebody mentioned crypto. Because I know, I know that was somebody's comment. For sure. There was a nice comment in saying, get us to Boca Chica, which would be great. Um, yeah. We'd uh, have to be able to find the time, but yeah, I yeah. think uh, that would be interesting nonetheless. But we got more work to do for that, and we'll see if we can get it done. Yep. But uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we will catch back with you later on this week. Take, Take care. Take it easy. And uh, safe? you know, here, here, here's the really strange part. Our intro music, it, it takes time to build, just like it built coming in. Yeah, it takes it's got to build to come out. So, we, so what you're saying is we have to keep talking. A just a bit. Put up with us for, for a, a, a little bit more. Just, just, just a, it's coming bit. now. Here. Oh, there it is. Oh, what I was going to say too. Um, Thanks, uh, thanks so much for the people that uh, have seen us. Actually, one of the people said they saw our oh, yeah. live broadcast location for the yes. launch. Hey, just just stop and say hello if you happen to see us there. We that'd be super cool to meet. Unless somebody. you're anonymous and you want to hack us. Well, then you don't know, stop I don't by. think they would stop by to say hi. They just hack you. <laughs> they would, just, yeah. They just our stuff would just stop working. And that would be or it. Or explode. You and know. One, and we're gonna stop working now. Right. Otherwise, we're gonna explode. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Take care. Take it easy. Peace. Bye. See ya.